welcome to my latest travel vlog. So this weekend we're heading off to Moine for a little quick trip to see the sand dunes and whatever else we find down there. And we decided to catch the overnight bus. The first one of this trip. So see how that goes. So got in at 2 a.m. last night. The bus was actually meant to arrive at 4, but it was really hooning it. Um, I should have vlogged because they actually just dropped us in this really random like stretch of road just off the side of the road. And I think had I been there by myself, I would have been really creeped out. I'm sure it's really safe, but it was dead quiet and empty and just like bushland kind of thing bushland but yeah anyway so I'm a little bit tired haven't had that much sleep but at least because we got in at two I had a few hours so we're just on the beach it's so nice to be near the ocean again um, and we're gonna go grab some breakfast and then make some plans for today so we had a bit of a nap and now we are at the fairy stream, which I don't really know what it is, but I'll take you around. This is the best thing I've seen so far. <laughs> This is definitely the most random tourist site I've been in a while. Do you get? Do you know anything about it? Uh, not a thing. We're, we're meant to walk up this beautiful stream called the Fairy Stream. So that's apparently all. it gets beautiful in 200 meters. They and promise if it, us. If it doesn't, there's ostrich riding for the children. <laughs> They were right. It is really, really, really beautiful once you get 200 meters down the stream. It's got like bright red sand dunes and cliffs next to it and like lush green, foresty, jungly kind of looking stuff. It's actually just, it's genuinely really, really, really nice. Much nicer than I expected. Well done, Moine. Tells me safe, but your mind is somewhere else. So the red sand is so red here that apparently people say that it reminds them of the Northern Territory, but I've actually never been to the Northern Territory in Australia. But it reminds me a lot of Mato Grosso de Sur and also around the Pantanal where they have beautiful right uh, beautiful red sand in Brazil and like the tropics next to it. So bringing back great memories of my Brazilian life. So we just stopped here for a drink and what they do is, if you want, you can go fishing in that little pond that I just showed you and once you catch a fish, they'll cook it up for your lunch. So, I don't really know how I feel about eating fish from that pond, but that's a thing that you can do here. Run, Daniel, run! <laughs> Just <laughs> testing my cardio out on the really hot sand dune. Oh my god, it's so hot! <laughs> I think I might need to run just so that my feet don't get burnt. And this is the top. Oh. Oh. 
So we just got up to the top of the sand dune and we can start we're starting to hear thunder. And we're like we better go down so the cameras don't get all wet. And all of a sudden we hear this -da! Daniel's storm alarm on his phone has gone off. It is time to exit the sand dune. Probably my two tips for here are, first of all, when you walk in, they'll probably try to sell you a guide, which you don't need. You just have to tell them that you don't need a guide. Probably a couple of times, then the guide will leave and you can walk down by yourself. Uh, my second tip is walk as far as you can be bothered walking because the further down the stream you get, the quieter and less people there are around. At the start of the stream, it's like, it's actually really dirty and quite gross and there's a lot of people around but once you get towards the end it's really beautiful so just keep on walking so we just got back from the ferry screen <laughs> um, and we're gonna head to we think the white sand dunes tonight but we've just come back to the hotel so that we can go for a little dip and cool down before we head out again because it is stinking hot. Somewhere else. this evening um, so we've just come into the main strip to try and find somewhere to sit and have a drink and maybe some food and hopefully watch some form of sunset or at least a storm roll in um, we're gonna go to one place because all of its advertising made it look like it was on the water but it was definitely not on the water so now we're just wandering down the main street to see if there's anywhere that we want to go seems like Eating is not really the main draw card of this city, so this might be a challenge, but I haven't eaten since breakfast, so really, really, really need some food. <laughs> Here we go! Oh, I don't know if you can see them in the camera because they're kind of over the ridge, but there is a bunch of cows up there. So, you think you're going to be safe from the traffic when you get on sand dunes, but in Vietnam, you're never safe 
from the traffic apparently. We finally found our spot with a bit of peace and quiet. So it is possible, you just have to walk quite a way. Get your sweat on up the sand dunes. But it's really beautiful once you do. I don't know whether I like this or the fairy stream better though. They're kind of the same thing, like they're both of them, the start of them is kind of crappy and looks really ugly and you're like, oh, why am I doing this? And then once you walk far enough, they're really nice, mm. I reckon. I know I say this in every video, but I think this is one of the nicest places I've been in Vietnam so far. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah? I'm really hot though. It's hot. We should have brought more than one water probably. <laughs> All Imagine right. that, like, two Australians coming to the smallest desert yeah. they've ever seen and dying of thirst. And dying of thirst. Yeah, I know, I think we're going to have to hike our way back soon just so we can get water. Mm. Yes, please. This is the hottest I've felt for a while. I think because it's so overcast. So it's sitting really heavy and we're on sand. But it's really nice. If you can find yourself a secluded spot where you're not going to get run over by four-wheel drives or ATVs, and it's nice. So funny how like we can be walking on this side of a sand dune, feels really peaceful, and then all of a sudden we hear Wah! in the back room, back room, in the background, as one of the four wheel drives comes hooning down the sand dune. Oh. Decided to walk on the very edge this time to stay away from them for a little bit longer. It's also really pretty with these little trees. We made it back down the dunes into Crazy Town. Uh, we need to get a water and hope that our taxi driver hasn't left us in the hour. We've been wandering around so we can get back. I'm so Ridiculous. So you can also go to they call it the red sand dunes, I think. So we considered going, but we decided not, we made an executive decision not to go because we only had limited time and they don't look the best. But we actually drove past the entrance to them today, so I'll try to get some footage on our way back of them so I can show you. I'm sure that they're kind of fun, but they just look a lot smaller, a lot more crowded and not as pretty. So if you have a limited time, I would recommend doing the white sand dunes because they're beautiful. Um, and also fairy, I thought the fairy stream was really beautiful. As, and like I said, you have to walk far enough that it gets beautiful. And I think a lot of people don't do that and that's why they don't like them. Um, but yeah, maybe if you have more time, the red dunes would be nice to do as well. And you can kind of do them on the way to or from the white sand dunes. Probably two so that you weren't disappointed when you were coming back. But yeah, just another little tip. These are the red sand dunes. We're back at the hotel now. We just had a shower and clean up because we were so sweaty, so hot that I put my hair up in my lovely supermarket scrunchie for the ride home. And we're just gonna get some food before we head off on our bus journey. The bus company actually called us before and really nicely said that they'll pick us up from a restaurant near the hotel. So at least we don't have to venture all the way out there. So we have time for a bit of a snack before we head off. Kind of sad to leave today because it'd be nice to just like chill by the beach for a day, but it's very easy to get to, so I might just have to come another weekend. We got even better seats on the way back. Bus ride of my life, and 
Antonio. You sound traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand. It was so uncomfortable. The seats were ridiculously, ridiculously <laughs> uncomfortable. It was like if you're, if you're, if your neck's made to be like this, that's what those seats were like. I don't know how it was so bad. I think the night one was better because it was I slept a bit in it and also because they like were going really fast and they didn't stop moving houses on the way back. They stopped for like toilet breaks and food breaks like every felt like every hour. It was ridiculous. Oh, I was awake for it. It was every hour. Every hour. <laughs> and then they dropped us off. They didn't say put him in when they got to this stop. They said four mile. Something no one knew when we like started this journey in Ho Chi Minh and that's where we had to get out and it wasn't even back at the bus stop or anything it was just like on the side of the road some random district in Ho Chi Minh and they're like Ho Chi Minh get out now except that they didn't say Ho Chi Minh they had to come and find us because we obviously like didn't get out of the bus because we didn't know what the hell they were talking about anyway aside from the back breaking journey home and the rest of the weekend was really lovely so I hope you enjoyed this weekend's vlog. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all very soon from somewhere else. Bye!